So David Price knocks out Matt Skelton in the second round with a body shot to continue his unbeaten run. Now, I thought this was a mixed bag from David Price. I saw some good things in there and I saw some not so good things in there. Um, first off, let's start with the, the not so good things. Um, from David Price's perspective, I did not like the way that he allowed a 45 year old Matt Skelton to simply put his head down and rush past his jab and get inside so easily. Right? I didn't like that. Right? Matt Skelton is, like I say, a 45 year old man. He's got slow hands. He don't have the best technique. And he was able to get inside on Price easy, right? And not only that, you know, when a guy like Skelton is coming forward in straight lines, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to, uh, you know, you can back up a little bit, but before you get to the ropes, you're supposed to spin off to the side. You're not supposed to let him back you up to the ropes and trap you on the ropes or trap you in the corner. You're not supposed to do that because that's where Matt Skelton's at his best, is when he can trap you on the ropes or trap you in the corner. Yeah? So you're supposed to spin off to the side. You understand? David Price wasn't spinning off to the side. He was allowing Matt Skelton to trap him on the ropes and get punches off. You understand? Like, okay, David Price is 6'8". We can't expect him expect that he can fight on the inside with a much shorter guy. Right? But if he can't fight on the inside, what he needs to do is tie people up when they're getting close, right? Like Vladimir Klitschko does. Vladimir Klitschko can't fight on the inside, but when you get up on him, he's going to tie you up. He ain't going to let you get any punches off. David Price allowed Matt Skelton to get a lot of punches off on the inside, and this is a 45-year-old man with slow hands. He was hitting David Price with clean punches on the inside. Matt Skelton is not a big puncher. Right, but he was able to land on David Price without too much trouble once he got on the inside. So that's a technical issue that David Price is going to have to address. He's going to have to work on tying people up on the inside. And also, like I said, not going backwards in straight lines. Yeah, If a guy's putting pressure on you, you don't want to allow him to back you into corners or trap you on the ropes. You want to spin off to the side. Back, you know, Moving backwards is fine, but as soon as you get to the ropes, you want to spin off. Yeah, you don't want to let people trap you in the corner like that if you can't fight up close. Yeah, so he's going to have to work on that. <clears throat> and also, there was moments in there where Skelton was actually giving him a bit of lateral movement, moving from side to side and sticking a jab on him. And to me, David Price looked a bit confused. Yeah, to me, David Price even looked a little bit distressed in this fight. I mean, there was just the, the, the beginning signs of a look of distress in David Price's body language and on his face. Yeah, other people may say, Hatman, I don't know what you're talking about. He didn't seem distressed to me. He seemed fine. Well, maybe that's because you may not have seen his fight, his amateur fights where he got stopped, where he got knocked down, where he lost badly, right? I saw those fights, so I know how David Price looks. I know his body language. I know the signals to look out for when he's distressed. And I personally, I, I believe I started to see some distress signals in this Matt Skelton fight. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't know. I'm, like I said, I'm, uh, David Price is a great talent, but I'm reserving judgment on him, on just how good he is, until I see him thoroughly tested and pass certain tests. I need to see him in there with a very good boxer to see if he really can box as well as people are claiming he can box. I need to see him in there with a, a, a really good inside pressure fighter who can punch to see whether David Price really has the heart and the chin and the toughness to survive a grueling battle. That's what I need to see. Yeah? Like I keep on saying, I'm not here hating on Price. He may well be the real deal, but I'm not yet convinced until I see him in certain situations. Right? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, you know, David Price, as far as I'm concerned, he's got a few things to work on, a few technical things. He's definitely not the finished article. And me personally, I definitely do not think that he will wipe out all the contenders in the division based on this performance against Skelton. No way. The guy's only had 15 fights and people are already proclaiming him as the future of the heavyweight division. I think that's premature to say that. I think it's very premature, right? You don't hear me saying that Bermain Stavern is the future of the heavyweight division. You don't hear me saying that Tyson Fury is the future. You don't hear me saying that Deont Deontay Wilder is the future. 
or even Kubrat Pulev, even though Pulev has proved more than any of the other contenders. You don't hear me saying that these guys, any of these guys are the future. As far as I'm concerned, they've all got a lot of questions to answer. You understand what I'm saying? They all need to be tested. Yeah? David Price is no different. The David Price hype train right now is full steam ahead and everyone seems to be jumping on. I'm not jumping on just yet. Yeah? <clears throat> Anyway, on to the positives about this fight. Obviously, David Price has got tremendous punching power. We know that. He's been showing that his last few fights. You know, when he's, he he hits people, as he says, they stay hit. Yeah. I love the punching power about the, you know with David Price. I love the fact that he's not afraid to let his hands go early in a fight. When he sees an opportunity, he's going to let the shots go. There's no hesitation, none of that. He's letting the shots go. That is what I really like about David Price. And I guess that's what's getting people so excited. I guess that's what's people get that's what is getting people maybe a bit overexcited. Yeah? They see a guy knocking people out and they see the punching power and think, wow, you know, maybe he's invincible with this kind of punching power. Listen, there's been a lot of guys that have come along with tremendous punching power over the years. If you follow boxing long enough, especially in the heavyweight division, there's been a lot of huge punches come along. A big punch alone is not gonna get you to the top. Trust me. Yeah, other fighters can punch too. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? A big punch alone will not get you to the top. Even though it's great what he's doing at the moment, you know what I mean? Like, let's just pull the reins in a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But either way, the power is there, and the power, you know, I mean, you you look at uh, heavyweight champions of the past, for example, George Foreman, who was a very crude fighter, very crude. Probably one of the crudest heavyweight champions of all time in terms of his technique. You know, very limited technique. But his power made up for it. You know? Will David Price, if he has any any limitations in there, will his power make up for it over and over again? Maybe it will. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm not convinced of it as yet. You know what I mean? But like I say, I definitely like the power. And I like the fact he's not afraid to use it. I like the fact that he goes to head and body. You know what I mean? I like that about him. I like that he's got a good variety of shots. He'll throw a straight right hand or you'll throw an uppercut. He'll go to the body with it. He'll throw a right hook as well. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you know, Price has got a, a good variety of punches and he's got power. All things that I like. You understand? <clears throat> so, yeah, overall, this performance against Matt Skelton is a bit of a mixed bag. Somebody asked me on Facebook... Who whose performance versus Matt Skelton was I more impressed by? Kubrat Pulev's or David Price's performance? Now, Kubrat Pulev fought Matt Skelton about two or three years ago and he stopped Matt Skelton in the fourth round. Um, and as we know, David Price stopped Matt Skelton in two rounds. Um, I said that I was more impressed with Kubrat Pulev's performance. Why? Because Kubrat Pulev fought Matt Skelton in his fourth professional fight. Yeah? David Price is fighting Matt Skelton in fought Matt Skelton in his 15th professional fight right so Pulev beat a guy who Skelton is uh, Pulev beat a guy who David Price has just beaten now he beat a guy in his fourth fight that Price didn't fight until his 15th fight and he done this two or three years ago you understand what I'm saying so and also on top of that Pulev got hit less in four rounds against Skelton than Price did in two rounds yeah, so for me personally, I was more impressed with Pulev. I mean, if Price had done that in his fourth fight, it would have been more impressive. Yeah, but doing it in his 15th fight, it's like eh, not, not quite as impressive as what Pulev did, especially since he did it a few years ago. You know what I mean? So that's that's my view on that anyway. Um, <clears throat> as far as Price's next opponent, uh, apparently it's going to be Tony Thompson. Um it's a better opponent than than uh, Matt Skelton, at least on paper. Although I'm not I'm not really too happy about that as an opponent. You know, I like the fact that they're keeping Price busy. That's that's very important. They're keeping him busy. Um, they're getting him lots of fights. But Tony Thompson, the reason why I don't really like Tony Thompson is because he's coming off a devastating defeat, a soul destroying, a soul crushing defeat to Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir, if you watch that fight, Vladimir really broke Thompson's spirit. Thompson basically quit at the end of that fight. Yeah, he basically quit. He went down and he was not really badly hurt and he could have got up. He basically quit, right? His his whole, you know, spirit and heart was crushed in that. He was humiliated in that 
Vladimir Klitschko rematch. Yeah, he's, he's, he's 40 years old. How much ambition does he really have in, in, you know, in the boxing game after that kind of defeat? Where's his confidence level going to be at going in there against David Price? You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I don't really like it as a fight. You know what I mean? I, I, would, I, I would rather they put him in there with someone that still has a bit of ambition, at least someone that's, that's you know, full at world level that's coming off some wins. You know what I mean? Or at least maybe coming off a, a close defeat or something. You understand? Like It's not like Thompson was coming off a split decision defeat or a majority decision defeat on the cards. No, he's coming off a devastating, soul-destroying, humiliating stoppage where he was basically forced to quit. Yeah? And he's 40 years old. You know what I mean? So me, I, I would much rather see him in there with, you know, someone like Hellenius or Pulev or, you know, just someone that has a little bit of ambition. You know what I mean? And, and is at least a decent age, not a 40-year-old, 41-year-old. You know what I mean? I would prefer that myself. But hey, we may see that down the line, you know. Um, he's going to fight Thompson. I think it's early next year he's fighting, um, you know, Tony Thompson. So hey, it is what it is. You know, we'll see how we'll see how that goes. But, you know, Thompson himself, never mind his age, never mind the fact he's coming off a devastating defeat. Thompson is a very slow, very limited, very clumsy fighter. He's not a puncher. Um He's he, like I say, he's not fast. He's very awkward and goofy looking when he fights. I don't know how much beating a Tony Thompson is is really gonna mean. I think I, I might have even preferred the Michael Grant fight to the Thompson fight. I think Michael Grant is easier to hit than Tony Thompson. That's one thing I will say. He, he may have a worse chin. You know, he I think Thompson might take a better shot than uh, Michael Grant. But the thing about Michael Grant is that he can punch. Yeah, he can punch. Um, also, he's an orthodox fighter, right? He's taller than Tony Thompson, he's an, and he's an orthodox fighter. So that that's more, you know, that's that's more relevant to the opponents that David Price is going to have to fight in the future if he fights at world level, right? He's going to have to fight orthodox fighters who are around six seven, and that's what Michael Grant is. He's an orthodox, and he's six seven, right? So I would have preferred they go to Michael Grant. Even Michael Grant is not a great opponent, but. To me, I would have preferred the Michael Grant than uh, than him fighting Tony Thompson. You know, what I mean, at this stage, anyway. So, but you know, it is what it is. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, obviously, Maloney's talking about uh, you know a Fury fight. He's also talking about a Chisora fight. Me again, Chisora's coming off a devastating knockout defeat, the kind of defeat that can damage a fighter permanently. You understand? And obviously he hasn't even got his British license back, so we don't even know if that fight can be made at the moment. But me personally, I, w- I would not like to see, uh, from Chisora's perspective, I wouldn't like to see him go straight in there with David Price after a devastating KO defeat that he suffered against David Hay. I wouldn't like to see it from from um, Chisora's perspective and from Price's perspective as well. You know, he may go in there and say, okay, no one, you know, knock out Chisora and say, no one's ever done this to, to Chisora so early. But he's coming off a knockout defeat himself. Do you understand? Let's say he goes in there and knocks out Chisora in the first round. If he fights Chisora, you know, after he fights Thompson, assuming he beats Thompson. Chisora's just come, just been knocked out in five rounds by David Hay. A devastating, humiliating knockout defeat. Yeah, he hasn't even had a chance to rebuild his confidence. Yeah? So... From that perspective, I wouldn't really want to see him fight Chisora right now because I don't think it would mean that much if he was able to destroy Chisora, right? And I think it's a bad career move for Chisora. I think he needs some fights to get his confidence back and to get his swagger back and then maybe fight a David Price, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? I'd, like, like I said, I'd, I'd love to see Price fight someone like Hellenius, Pulev, or uh, even someone like Dimitrenko, yeah? I'd love to see him go that route, Obviously, we'd love we would all love the Fury fight, but you know, whatever. I'm not even going to get into that debate right now. We'd all, obviously all love to see that, but it's not happening for the you know for the moment. Uh, Fury seems to be going for a title shot against uh, Vladimir or Vitali, so you know, whatever. But yeah, man. So that's my thoughts on David Price against Matt Skelton and David Price's career thus far. Um, like I say, same same as I said before, his uh, previous two fights. Let's just let's just rein rein in the hype a little bit. You know what I mean? He's a very talented guy. He may prove to be the best of the current generation, but let's not jump to conclusions just yet. Yeah? Anyway, um, leave your comments in the comment section below. As always, this is Hatman. I'm out.